Peter Vaughan and today I am very, very excited to bring you the first UK review of this motorhome. Now what is it? Well, it's the big brother to the Chausson X550, one of our most popular videos at 786,000 views so far. But this isn't just the big brother to the X550, the new X650, but it's also been voted our compact motorhome of the year and overall motorhome of the year 2024. Now, I say that this is the big brother to the X550, but it's not that much bigger because that's the whole point of these X models. So, whereas the 550 is 5.99 metres long, the 650 is 6.36 metres, or the same length as a Fiat or Peugeot extra long panel van. And it's not much wider than a panel van either. Look at this moulding where the habitation area meets the cab and you'll see that it is really panel van sized. In fact, just 2.1 metres. Now, it's still benefiting from the flat sides of a coach-built motorhome that give you so much more space inside and, of course, superior insulation to the majority of panel van conversions. The 650, like the 550, only comes in exclusive line trim and prices start at £76,990. Now I'm grateful to River Motorhomes of Sutton Coalfield for the loan of this X650 and they've said that not only are they a Chausson dealer but they may actually put an X650 on their hire fleet as well so if you want to try one to make sure that it's the right van for you well that could be a very good option for you but well you may be sold on it before you even do that because just look at it it isn't like any other motorhome on this site the Caravan and Motorhome Club's Broadway site in the Cotswolds it isn't like anything else on this site or on River Motorhomes forecourt it just looks different now maybe not everybody will like this striking black and white scheme but it certainly looks modern and you've got some nice touches too, like these flush habitation windows, definitely a premium feel to those. The black alloy wheels and the front fog lamps, all of which are standard spec. It might be a Chausson badge on the front, but of course the base vehicle is the ubiquitous Fiat Ducato Series 9. 140 horsepower engine as standard, a 2.2 litre turbo diesel with a six speed manual gearbox, but you can upgrade to the 180 horsepower engine, that's a £3,990 option, and if you want the nine speed automatic gearbox, well, that is another £3,990 option. So if you want both, you're looking at another eight grand. Now let's take a more detailed look first of all down the near side. Well here you've got your vent for your Truma boiler, 10 litre gas and electric, mains electric boiler. Your mains hook up of course and then the usual cassette toilet servicing hatch. I do think that these black skirts and wheel arch mouldings give the vehicle almost a sort of off-roader look about it. And then in this rear corner, you've got your gas logger, just one six kilo cylinder. But then you shouldn't use an awful lot of gas because the heating in this van is a five and a half kilowatt Webasto diesel fired heater. So you're just using your gas for your boiler if you're not hooked up and of course for cooking. Up here, rather high up, is a bit of ex external storage that you can also reach from inside the vehicle but could be useful maybe for a couple of lightweight outdoor chairs and a few bits and bobs. Anyway, it's always nice to have a bit of extra storage. I like these handles too that when you shut the door you then positively lock them with that mechanism. And then here is your fresh water filler. It's a 90 litre inboard tank, wastewater is 100 litres and that's under slung which we'll come on to 
in a minute. In the meantime, I'm trying really hard not to freeze. My hands, I think, are turning to ice. It's about zero degrees. It's considerably cooler, I think, in the night. And this is when maybe you're not quite so jealous of my job. I should add that although it is really, really cold today and there's possibility of snow tonight, I was very, very cosy inside this van last night. That heater does a really good job and unlike some diesel heaters, there's none of that sort of noise that you get as they're heating up. It is very, very quiet, very efficient heater. Now, moving on to the back of this van, well, it does look like, again, like nothing else on the market. So many motorhomes at the back are just a big white slab of GRP. Oh, incidentally, Chausson uh, construction is the IRP construction with GRP sides, rear and roof. And the floor is 64 millimetres thick, so good chunk of insulation in the floor but back to this rear panel and again they've made a real effort with it doesn't it look different from the norm reversing camera is built in down here and that is part of the connect pack 2690 pounds gives you the reversing camera and the dab radio nine inch pioneer touch screen display on the dashboard but well yeah, doesn't it look good? So let's take a look down the near side now. And the key thing is this window. Well, you might be thinking, well, just looks like a window. Yeah, but it's not just a window because the X550 didn't have a window here when it was launched. And pretty, near, pretty nearly everybody that watched the video, all 786,000 of you, said, hmm, needs a window, not that silly pinboard and mirror thing. Well, there were issues with the space for the bed coming down and they couldn't have fitted a blind on the inside and that sort of thing. So that's why there wasn't a window. But now I'm very pleased to tell you that 2024, not only does the X650 have this window, but the X550 has a window on both sides of the lounge now too. On this particular vehicle, we also have the accessory pack, and for £3,590, that gives you the rollout awning, the light above the door, the fly screen on the door, a 140 watt solar panel on the roof, and pre wiring for not just one leisure battery, but for two leisure batteries. So with the connect pack and the accessory pack on this vehicle brings the total to £83,270. Up until now, everything you've seen about this X650 is very, very like the X550. But the one thing that this vehicle addresses that the X550 couldn't is garage storage. Now, the X550 had a little bit of external storage, but this really does redefine it. It gives you a proper garage. Now, show someone say you can get two full-size bicycles in here. I'll give you the measurements. It's 1.55 metres deep across the vehicle, 79 centimetres wide and 1.08 metres high. Now we have at the moment got these two large infill cushions in there that form the downstairs bed. I suspect that most people will use these as a two berth and won't need to carry those cushions. In here, you have an LED light just inside the door. You've got a 12 volt socket down at the bottom and over, rather strangely, in that far corner is a three pin main socket. You've also got these fixed tie down hooks and well, it is a proper garage, albeit with just this one loading door because of course you've got the gas locker in the opposite corner. It's quite high off the floor too, as you can see. But proper room for all your external gear, whether that's bikes or whatever you want to carry. You've also got a door 
that slides back so you can load this space or access this space from inside the vehicle but the real USP will come to you later on because this garage is height adjustable. And now in a slight change to the usual routine we'll go for a drive. So what's it like to drive this Chausson X650? Well, I have to say, the key thing is it just feels like a camper van. It doesn't feel like a coach-built motorhome. A part of that, of course, is the, the overall dimensions, but also the fact that you've got the door mirrors on the standard arms, not the longer arms that stick out wide of the bodywork on, on a coach-built motorhome because there's nothing extra for you to have to see past. So your overall width with the door mirrors is that much less too and that on country roads makes a big difference. Performance, well this 140 horsepower engine standard unit is perfectly adequate uh, for a van of this size and weight. And the six-speed manual gearbox, well, that's nice and light and easy to use too. Um, whilst it might be nice to have the nine-speed automatic because that is a lovely gearbox, this six-speed manual is very, very easy to use. And if you're used to a manual, well, why not? Save the four grand. In terms of spec, well, it's got all the things that you'd really want. You've got the leather steering wheel, you've got ESP with hill holder and traction plus, you've got cruise control, cab air conditioning. You've also got the eco pack which gives you stop start. Um, <clears throat> so all round it's, it's a pretty good spec. If you want this nine inch Pioneer display uh, with the Android Auto and so on, and, um, and the reversing camera that uses that display as well. That Well, that is the Connect Pack, and frankly, I can see virtually everybody wanting that option. Because it's a Fiat, um, you have got a very firm ride, um, which does elicit a few rattles, but not too many, I have to say. It was quite quiet. Um, coming down here yesterday that yeah there's there's the odd chatter but uh, nothing nothing serious nothing compared with a lot of coach built motors I've driven um, and of course the firm ride does give you very very good stability both in crosswinds and on on twisty roads and when you're passing lorries and that sort of thing yeah I mean the Fiat dashboard and that is is feeling very old-fashioned now perhaps um, cheap hard plastics but it still drives well um, cab seats got plenty of adjustment you've got height and tilt on the squabs and you've got twin armrests on each although they're not upholstered but I do like this sort of almost denim style upholstery that you get in the X range so what should I sum up the driving by well it drives like a camper van and just to add a footnote on the cab spec, the mirrors are electric folding ones as well as being the usual twin lens and heated and electrically adjusted. They fold in, useful if you're parking in a tight space. Well, I must say it's very nice to come in, close the door and peel off one of my many layers that are much needed out there and to come in to all this space. It doesn't feel like a camper van sized vehicle, does it? With this enormous table settee over there that's over five foot long, like 1.56 meters or something. Got big windows on either side. You've got this fancy X in the ceiling as well as the downlighters. X there, just in case you've forgotten what sort of motorhome you bought. 
And just to remind you, it says Chausson on the seats as well. And Chausson above on the big opening over cab sunroof. So lots of light in this front lounge. And lots of space too. Now you can't beat a bowl of hot soup on a day like today. And you can't beat having a big lounge because, well, you're hardly going to be sitting outside, are you? There's plenty of room in this van if you want to invite friends in. And yes, it is a four berth, but really this is very much a two person van. So as well as all this space, well, you've got these pin lights in the front of the uh, cab area. So you haven't got reading lights as such, but plenty of illumination with these unusual lamps over on the near side above the window, which double up when you uh, turn, the, uh, turn this into the bedroom. Well, just plenty of daylight, as I say. Time for my soup. When you've cleared the food away, well, the table can fold in half and you've got loads of room to spin the seats round and put your feet up both front seats go right round through a full 180 degrees so that you can really relax. The table also height adjusts. There's a switch on the front of the kitchen and it uh, goes up and down electrically. Now you'll notice that the cab floor is a little higher than the lounge area and this is the table in its highest position which suits the cab seats. If you're going to sit here to dine, well you just set the table a little bit lower. Sitting here you can easily appreciate just how important it is to have that second lounge window. It's just all part of making this a light bright space. We've even got a window in the habitation door as well and I should have mentioned earlier that the door is linked to Fiat's remote central locking. Above the door you've got your main control panel with water levels, battery condition, that sort of thing. You've also got a separate little control, very small one, for the Webasto heating. That's very simple. You just set the temperature that you want. And then you've got rather strangely 12 volt and aerial sockets up there as well. I'm not sure where you would mount a TV unless you just carried one loose and put it on the end of the kitchen there. But then maybe who watches TV on a TV these days, you can just put a laptop on the table and watch whatever you want on catch up or Netflix or whatever. Maybe that's what Chausson are thinking and not uh, just an old fashioned telly box on the wall. When it comes to the kitchen, well, they have thought about the UK market because the foreign spec or continental spec uh, X650 just has a simple hob. The UK market gets this Thetford triplex cooker with two gas rings, mains hot plate and a separate oven and grill. The kitchen doesn't have any folding flaps or anything to extend the workspace, but you don't really need it. You've got a good chunk of worktop here and this solid cover for the sink, which can sort of double up as a draining board if you wish. And you've got this nice quality Argo tap in fashionable matte black. Plenty of storage too. Uh, two large soft closing drawers in the kitchen. One and two. Cupboard below and this one under the, under the oven. Well that's big enough for my coffee machine so that's a good size. And then you've got more storage, good size storage, in the top lockers above. This sort of fancy piece on the wall, well it doesn't serve any purpose, you can't hook anything to it or anything, but it does enliven this blank wall at the back. And then over on the other side you've got a tall thin Thetford compressor fridge, 149 and a half litre capacity. Um, should be very efficient being a compressor type. You just switch it on and forget. And of course, it's much more tilt tolerant than a three-way type fridge. So, a good kitchen for such a compact van. 
And I should just add on the subject of electric power points, well, you've got a main socket above the door, another one at floor level in the lounge, and one on the front of the kitchen unit here. And that's quite convenient for a kettle or toaster or something on the end of the unit. You also got a couple of USB ports also on the front of the galley. Opposite the kitchen, of course, is the washroom. And in the ceiling above, there is a roof light, which gives you ventilation and, of course, a little bit of daylight. Up there, too, is a rail to hang any wet towels or clothes to dry. In fact, roof lights are something that are uh, pretty comprehensively equipped in this van. You've got another one of these small roof lights over the kitchen and also a big wind-up roof light over the sort of central uh, aisle, but just inside the door. And that is one of those nice big ones. It's lengthways on too. Anyway, behind this sliding timbre door, you've got a decent sized washroom. It's not huge, but it's bigger than you'd find in a lot of camper vans. You've got decent storage in this cupboard behind me and quite a good size basin. Toilet is the usual swivel cassette, and sitting here, well, it's a comfortable height. It's not way off the ground. You haven't got dangly feet or anything like that. And you've got a wooden duckboard in the shower tray below. But the clever bit, like a lot of coach-built motorhomes, is when you want to con convert this space from a toilet room into a shower. So when you want to have a shower, it's a swing wall arrangement wash basin and mirror just pull round to the right and now you've got a good size shower cubicle really good size space even you can use this as a seat either put your feet up to wash your feet or sit down to have a shower even uh, it's a really good size space and of course no horrible sticky shower curtain two drains in the shower tray as well so, a really good shower. Never quite sure why the washroom door is uh, fixed in the open position for travel. Surely you want to keep the nifts in when you're traveling, but hey, that's the way Chausson always does it, and other manufacturers too. Now, this is the bit I've been itching to show you because the Chausson X650 has a unique feature the SDR, the Smart Dressing Room. Well, you'd expect something unique in a motorhome of the year, wouldn't you? Slide back this door and, well, there's the garage that you saw earlier. And above it, a decent size space for your clothes. A couple of drawers on this side. A bit of shelved storage with these nice elasticated straps so everything doesn't fall out when you're traveling and more elasticated straps over on the other side but the clever bit as i mentioned the garage is height adjustable so if you don't need a full height for your bikes if you're not carrying bikes well there's a switch on the front of the kitchen and you can have a taller wardrobe or suitable for hanging your shirts neatly. Or, if you make sure there is nothing in the bottom part, you can lower the wardrobe part, the, the wardrobe floor, if you like, right down. It's a bit jerky on this van, which I don't remember on the one I saw in France. And then you can just step in. You've got a mirror here. You've now got access to the outside locker that I showed you before from the outside of course and well you can get changed in here what do you mean that's not the right outfit for the Cotswolds in early January oh, I thought I'd have to try that you really could use it as a smart dressing room or a changing room and yes you can Headroom's only about 1.72 metres or just under 5 foot 8, but you have got a big mirror and you've even got somewhere you can sit to, to get undressed. And of course, you've got all your clothes in situ in there. And I've also discovered that outside inside cupboard over on the near side corner. Well, you can get the big infill cushions for 
the downstairs bed in there out of the way too, so they don't have to be in the garage. So the smart dressing room is the USP, but in this class of van, equally important is the fact you don't have to make up a bed. It's a drop-down bed that comes down over the lounge. Now, of course, show some of my past masters at this, but it's unusual in such a narrow-bodied vehicle. Let's show you how it works. But before I do, note that you've got pleated blinds on the near side window, the Remis cab blinds, but because of lack of space, here on the off side, and this was the original issue, if you remember, of the thickness of the blind, you've just got this fabric screen that unrolls, does a perfectly decent job of blackout. So the first job in bed making is to lower the table right down. And then remove all the backrest cushions so that the drop down bed can come all the way down. And then it's just this button on the front of the kitchen next to the table one for the bed. And now you'll be the envy of just about every camper van owner because you have this very easy to access double bed just 75 centimeters off the floor it's very very comfortable one piece mattress proper bed and it's 1.88 meters long by 1.4 meters wide that's uh, six foot two by four foot seven plenty of room to sit up in bed you've got these reading lights above you okay you're gonna to have to be careful not to damage the blind behind you but you have got a remarkably good bedroom for such a compact van note too that it is still perfectly possible to squeeze out through the habitation door it's not the limbo job that it is in some drop-down bed models but just one little interesting thing that I spotted when you raise the bed back up Make sure your partner isn't in the altogether, just coming out of the shower, because just watch what happens with the blind as the bed goes up. Hmm. <gasps> now, as I've said, you can use the X650 as a four berth. Simply don't drop the electric bed all the way down, stop it part way, and use the two big infill cushions between the sofas with all the backrest cushions removed, and the table as the support for these two big center cushions, and you make a downstairs bed that's 1.93 meters by 1.56 meters at the head here, narrowing to just 1.14 meters at the foot. That's six foot four long by five foot one and a half here, narrowing to three foot nine at the foot. So still a good size double bed and it's pretty flat. Headroom is about 67 centimeters for this bed and about 63 centimeters for the drop down bed in this position. And of course you need a ladder then to get to the upper bed. I'm not sure I'd recommend this for four berth use, but as an occasional option, it could work. Probably more useful more of the time than the four berth bunk bed style sleeping arrangement is the fact that the X550 also has four travel seats. You simply rearrange the sofas, there are no extra cushions required, but there are quite a few cushions left over. The agouti backrests simply flip up from underneath the sofas and you've got headrests attached to the frames. This one on the off side has slightly more legroom than the near side one, but they both have ice fix, both have three point seat belts, and of course you're facing forward as you should be for travel. So, occasional use, 
yeah, you probably wouldn't want to be doing it every day, but occasional use, and especially for children, a great added bit of versatility for this motorhome. Back in summer 2021, MMM magazine brought you an exclusive review of the Chausson X550. Now that review is still available digitally, just log on to outandaboutlive.co.uk where you can get all our past reviews and past issues. Now, back then my verdict was, when so many motorhomes look so similar, it's great to see some genuinely new thinking from those masters of innovation at Chausson. For many couples, the new X550 will be the ideal combination of camper van size and motorhome comfort. It's less successful as a four-berth, but we love its comfortable lounge, great drop-down bed and generous washroom. It's even better than we hoped it would be. The X650 is all of that and more. You've still got the great lounge, the great drop-down bed, a different washroom, but one that works really well, and especially it's a great shower. Got a good kitchen too, but that smart dressing room, or garage, or whatever you want to use it for, that is the USP. I'm sure that many people will just set the garage height as they need it, and that will be it forever. But if you sometimes take bikes, and sometimes don't, it's great to have the option. Or maybe you'll take your bikes and then you'll lock them up outside when you get on site. And then you can use that as a changing room, maybe for when you're going down to the beach. Anyway, it's a versatile space. You haven't got a fixed height of garage. You don't have to have a bike-sized garage. You can lower it right down and use smaller things, outdoor chairs and so on underneath, and have a huge wardrobe above. It's very, very versatile. And yet this is still a camper van sized vehicle, camper van width, and this only the same length as a long wheelbase, extra long wheelbase Fiat or Peugeot panel van. All that makes it a very, very worthy winner of the 2024 Motorhome of the Year title. Thanks ever so much for watching. Please don't forget to like and to subscribe to the channel. And now I'm going to use that smart dressing room to go and put some proper clothes back on. Mm-hmm.